Right, welcome back to another video. Um, today we're going to be talking about animation and how we can make things move within our materials. So, uh, I'm going to start with a simple texture, which is just going to be a cloud noise. Uh -huh. Simple channel pack noise. And if I plug that into my emissive, just to preview it. And to start with, I'm just going to plug in a panner node. Now, this won't do anything because it doesn't have any speed values. So I give it a speed in X. Suddenly it's moving. Now, that works, that's fine. So what's it actually doing? Well, if I take our text coordinates, normally this allows us to control our tiling, things like that. But if I add time, which is a node we can have in our materials, now our, our text is moving. Um, so what's going on here? Well, it's adding, well, why is it diagonal? So it's adding both uh, time to both the red and green channels which is giving it movement in X and Y. If I go back to my panner and set this to be 1 1 you should see if I duplicate this this is exactly the same so they're moving at the same speed so this is what this node is doing it's adding time values to our UV coordinates and that's giving us the appearance of things moving um, such as this so the way I usually have this set up there's a couple of little tips and tricks firstly you want to have different values in your two panners. So in this case, if we go for minus one, minus one, if I now multiply these two values together, combining combining two animated masks together gives you a really nice result. So there's a couple of more things we can do here. Um, having them one, one, minus one, minus one, they're, they're quite eye-catching numbers. So if we just say like 0.91, then maybe, I don't know, minus 0.85, minus 1.05, something like that. Still getting the same overall motion, but they're just not quite so uh, exact on the diagonals as they were. Um, and we want a speed control. So whenever we're doing any kind of animation, we always want to have a speed parameter. So it's just a scalar parameter I have called speed. If I plug this into time, you can see that speed of zero is completely stopped. And I can make things as slow or as fast as I like. Um, let's go for the slower one, shall we? Um, which is pretty cool. Um, one other little trick that I like to do with using these kind of animated texture sets. Um, by default, if I don't plug anything into coordinate, it assumes the default values from the text coordinate. So it assumes that that is connected like that. Um, but if we then multiply this by a small value, just doesn't really matter what it is, 1.1, 1.15, something like that, just so that you get a slightly different tiling for the second panner or second texture coordinate now. So now they're going to be slightly different in their um, in their scale. And you can go push this quite high, depending on how, what your texture looks like. Um, and we've still got the control in here, if I set this to 2 and 2, to control the overall tiling and both of them work together because they're based off that same thing. So a little tip for you there. Um, as always, afterwards, you can do what you like to these numbers. Uh, so you could say some power them up, give yourself some more contrast. Um, in this video, we're not going to focus so much on what we're doing after the animation. Um, last week's video, or the last video I did um, about masks and maths, that will give you some good ideas about what you can do here, or maybe the um, gradient mapping, how you could do some things with colorizing. Um, so for this example, we're just focusing more on how we're making that stuff move and creating that animation. So that's pretty cool. We can create all sorts of movement that way. There is also a rotator. There's another type of node that creates rotation. Uh, plug that in. Um, less useful in my uh, experience tends to be when you're doing things that are rotating you want to be using um, the object to be rotating so if you're putting on a sprite or a mesh or whatever it is uh, you get more control that way but you can do this and it does get used sometimes um, basically it's doing the same thing it's moving the the, the UVs around uh, it's a much more complex set of maths so I won't do it here it's not just adding um, but yeah good to know about the rotator so that's how we can do simple animations with textures. What happens if we just want to do a procedural animation? Well, we can do that as well. So this time node, if I just plug, plug this in in preview, 
what that looks like. Uh, it's crazy bloomy. How come? Well, the output of this is seconds in real world seconds. So after five seconds, we're having a value of five. This value now is going to be somewhere in the, I don't know, hundreds, thousands, whatever. Um, so not much use to us. So what we need to do is make this repeat in some way. And there's a few ways we can do that. Firstly, I'm going to use a frac node. And what this is doing is just taking that time value and then ignoring the whole numbers. So as it gets one, it's going to give us the, the decimal part then we set back to zero. So you can see it's going from black to white, black to white, black to white. Um, and it's giving us a nice repeating pattern from our time. So um, this is actually baked into this node these days. You can turn on a period. If you do a time with a period of one, you should see that that's exactly the same. So up to you which of these two methods you want to use. I tend to use this one because this is a new fe function, I think. Um, and you can just kind of see what's going on a bit easier, I think. But in ten, entirely up to you. Um, the other most common ways we'd make a repeating pattern from a linear series of numbers is a sine wave. Uh, and this will be giving us values now that go uh, oscillate between one positive one and minus one. And that's where we're getting these large periods of black um, because Unreal can't render negative numbers. So if we did a absolute, that will give us a double pulse because now any of those negative numbers are being replaced by positive numbers. Um, alternatively, if I go back with a sign, actually, there's a node called constant by a scale, and what this does is it just takes the the zero to one range and it adds one and then halves it and multiplies by 0.5. So that means that we get uh, instead of going from minus one to one, it rescales that sine wave down or up, whichever way. It rescales it, so now it goes from zero to one. Uh, and again, if we go in here, debug sign. There's actually a function that does exactly this. If we open it up, constant bar scale, sine wave, time multiplied by a parameter. So um, that is there for you to use if you wish. Uh, one thing I would say about this function, um, probably whatever you're doing with this, is you're going to use retiming. You're going to control the timing yourself. Uh, but for some reason, the default speed of this is 0 0.5 instead of 1. Um, so if we do this now, these two are completely the same because they're doing the exact same things. Time into a sine wave and then constant by a scale to get 0 to 1. So uh, let me just double check. Is that everything? Oh, there's another one. That one. So there's also a linear sign. This is a slightly more complicated function. Uh, there's what it is, linear sign. Um, if you open it up, there's a lot more math going on in here. Um, but basically, it's taking that sine wave and converting it to be kind of a sawtooth wave. So instead of having nice curved values, I think this is the right one. So instead of having nice curved values, these is now just blending 0 to 1 linearly, um, which you can obviously use as well. Um, that's all pretty cool. Lots of different things going on here, um, different ways we can combine these. If you're doing something like a flashing light or, I don't know, some kind of warning sign, you could use a lot of these types of things, but they're a little bit boring, aren't they? I mean, they're just a, a pulse or a, or a flicker or something like that. So let's try and get some more interesting things going on in here. Well, let's go back to using some gradients. So a basic text chord node, it's just two gradients together. If I mask out the green channel, you see I get values black to white. Um, now if I do the same funky thing that I was doing before. If I add time to this, this is going to bloom out horribly because I've just taken a 0 to 1 and added an infinite value. So effectively I've got crazy overblown values. But I can do my frac trick again and you'll see because we started with a gradient, all of those pixels are now out of time step with the other and we get the appearance of something moving. Um, and this can create some quite cool patterns. Um, Obviously, this also works for a sign. And again, here the black values aren't black; they're negative. So we could do an, a bias, or a, a, yeah, let's do a bias, bias or an abs or something like that. Or you could just clamp them and discard the, the zero, the lower, uh, discard the negative values and clamp them to zero or something, depending on the kind of effect you're trying to make. Um, but this technique 
could also be extended to textures. So uh, if I bring in my animate gradients texture, um, all this is is a simple channel pack. So we've got a gradient in the red values and a mask in the green values. Channel pack them together so that they're a bit more efficient. And I can do the same logic. Let's just use the frac. Oh, I didn't do mask either. If I just plug my red in there, that's where my gradient was. You can see we're starting to get some cool animations. So by inputting our own gradient, we can get our our texture to do whatever we want, or animation to do whatever we want. So uh, obviously this is affecting the whole thing, but that's not really what we want. Luckily for us, I already made a mask. We can just mask out those background bits that are flicking through and you can see we're getting our animation. Um, pretty cool. A uh, couple of things I will say. Firstly, um, you can see it's not quite right. We are getting some pixelation. Um, because the gradient we've brought in from Photoshop, um, it, it's been compressed. So the values we're getting out of these gradients are mathematically derived. There's no, no compression on them whatsoever. Nice, clean, crisp result. If you want to start bringing in your own textures, um, you are going to get some compression errors. So um, make sure you turn off sRGB. If I turn that back on and change this back to color, we'll see. We'll get the shooting thing going off here. This is where the gamma curve has been applied. So anytime you're using color, you want to use a uh, sRGB enabled so that the colors look the same as you authored in Photoshop or, or whatever package. Um, anytime you're doing black and white masks or channel packed, so things like roughness, metalness, um, or in this case an effects texture, um, make sure you turn that off. I mean this is quite a cool, cool effect, you could maybe use this to your advantage for something, um, but if you want to be mathematically accurate, and we tend to want to be mathematically accurate, uh, set this to um, sRGB disabled. Uh, you could play with the different compression settings. I don't know if I change this to vector displacement. Is that gonna? It's gonna give me a better result, maybe, uh, maybe a little bit, um, but it's gonna be a much bigger texture. Um, oh, let's not do that one. Much bigger texture size on disk. So depends if you need the um, if you need the visual result to be really high. You can use an uncompressed texture or a different compression setting here, maybe. Um, or if you can get away with this result, then then you can leave it as is. So, a couple more final points on this. As always, time multiplied by speed. Need to have the control. That's going to give us the ability to slow this down. Make it really fast. Same as we had before. Um, maybe that's a bit too fast, um, but obviously full control over all of those things, what's what we want as an artist. Um, and also we could just have it in here, before we do our frac, if we multiply here, and we multiply by a value that I'm just going to call something like banding, obviously multiplying by zero is no good, but if I multiply by something like, I don't know, five, it's going to give us more bands on our frac, um, so you can get some quite nice results there. Um, and same, you can go down here to, I don't know, a small amount, depending on how you want. And as always, these are just values, so nothing stopping us going in afterwards. Let's say maybe subtract 0.5, and now we're only going to see the first half of that gradient. So any of these values that are above that. So any of the, the values that were below 0.5, so the second half of the gradient has now gone away. Um, we are getting a soft fade in and a hard edge at the end. Well that's to do with our frac. We change this to a sign. See if this works. Hopefully you can see we get a nice smooth fade in, thing comes along and goes away again and it's nice and black behind it. So lots of ways we can do animation um, just thinking about our starting forms, our starting gradients, whether we want to use frac or sign to give different results, um, and then how we combine those. And then afterwards, what we do with those black and white values. So either for like bring them down, mask them out, colorize them, use them for opacity, 
all sorts of fun things. So it's going to give me a nice result. Probably need some colour. There we are. We can make some cool things that way. So. Um, Lots of different animation things we can do. Hopefully that's quite helpful. Uh, as always, uh, questions, comments, etc., let me know. Uh, and I will see you all next time.